Something powerful is coming on February 3rd. Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan, overtly stated that television was the major mainstream infiltration for the new satanic religion. LaVey boastfully acknowledges the effectiveness TV has had in transforming us. The TV set, or satanic family altar, has grown more elaborate since the early 50s, from the tiny fuzzy screen to huge entertainment centers covering entire walls with several TV monitors. What started as an innocent respite from everyday life has become in itself a replacement for real life for millions. A major religion of the masses. I haven't come forth in a great many years because I didn't want to be relegated to another guest on a TV talk show. But I can assure you, Satanism is here to stay. Satan can take the form of a beautiful woman. Satan can take the form of a sleek animal. An automobile can be very satanic. These things can be anthropomorphized into Satan. Satan can take the form of a beautiful woman. I just want to ask you a question. How would you like to make one simple decision that will change your life forever? Okay, I'm glad Scientology works for you, but... Just listen. What if I told you that I have the cataclysmic power to give you anything and everything you've always dreamed of? Who are you? Promise not to tell anyone? Okay. Cross your heart and hope to die? I am the devil. Satan, Lucifer, Beelzebub, the prince of darkness. Well, the princess of darkness, anyway. You're a very skeptical person, you know that. If you could just buy into this whole I'm the devil thing, it'll save us both a lot of these questions. Maybe I should call you a cab. Although it's gonna be hard to find one that'll go to hell this time of night. Ooh, what a delightfully pecan wit. I can see we're gonna get along famously. Cheers, darling. Listen here. Why is this so hard for you to believe? Do you think your mummy and daddy just made me up so you'd be a good boy? Okay, okay. You're the devil. What do you want with me? I want you to be happy, Elliot. You have such potential. All you need is a little push in the right direction. I am happy. Oh, please. You don't have to lie to me. I know every dark thought in your tiny little mind. I know that every night you go home to your horrible little apartment and you eat your little frozen dinner and you make your little bowl of popcorn and you watch TV and you can't keep your eyes open anymore. And then you crawl off to bed and wonder why you're alone and nobody likes you. Not every night. And you cry. <laughs> yeah, sure. I know what's in your heart, Elliot. You could cry right now. I'm talking about reinvention, taking control of your destiny. You want to be liked? You want to be loved? How about respected? How about feared? What exactly are we talking about? You want to see how it works, baby? wish for something. Like what? Whatever you want. It's yours. Just say the word. Okay, I wish I had a Big Mac and a large Coke. It is done. Hi, how you doing? What can I get you? A Big Mac and a large Coke. Fries? No. It comes to 347. Do you have 347? I left my purse in the underworld. Oh, yes, this truly is the work of the devil. And to think that I doubted you. I'm gonna go now. But what's the problem? This doesn't prove anything. I could have done this myself. I even had to pay for it. Well, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Did they ever tell you this? I didn't even get any fries. Oh, I don't believe this. I'm offering you the opportunity of a lifetime, and all you can do is moan about French fries. I used to be too scared to stand up for some. They scared to lose their house. Or they scared to lose their record deal. I sold my soul to the devil.
I know it's a crappy deal. Lisa it came with a few toys like a happy meal. Good night. Oh, fine. Okay. Well, I'm obviously not getting through to you, so let's just forget it. Satan can take the form of a sleek animal. An automobile can be very satanic. I'll give your left back to your car. <laughs> That's your car? Nice car. It sure is. September, set your soul free.
locked ours, Club Iron. We better get in there. Everyone's waiting for you. Everyone who? All your friends. How are you doing, Mr. Richard? Somebody take a picture of me and Elliot. Excited to see you. It's nice to feel accepted, isn't it? I can give you that. I can make the whole world love you. <laughs> you still don't believe me, do you? Of course not. First of all, you look nothing like the devil. Oh, really? I suppose I could have gone this way. Ah! But it's so trick or treat. It's true! You really are the devil! Oh, come on, baby. Come and sit down. I know this has all been horribly overwhelming for you. Can I ask you a question? Sure you can. You can ask me anything you like, as long as you don't ask me if there's a god. I get that one all the time. It drives me absolutely bonkers. Yes, there's a god. Really? I, well, what's he like? You know, you'd think that meeting the devil would be interesting enough, but no. All people want to know about is him. Like, he's so bloody fascinating. So he's a man? Yeah. Most men think they're God. This one just happens to be right. Now listen, darling. I don't want to pressure you, but why don't we take a teensy little look at the contract? Oh. Oh. <sighs> um... I, Elliot Richards, hereafter known as the Damned, the damned? How about the dom? Sound better? Don't get hung up on the language, darling. There's nothing sinister here. It's all standard boilerplate. Paragraph one states that I, the devil, a not-for-profit corporation with offices in Purgatory Hell in Los Angeles, will give you seven wishes to use as you see fit. Seven? Why not eight? Why not six? I don't know. Seven just sounds right. Paragraph two outlines the manner in which you'll pay for the aforementioned wishes. What? Are you kidding? I have to give you my soul? After you've had your wishes, of course. But it's my soul! I can't give you my soul! What are you, James Brown? What's the big deal? Have you ever seen your soul? Do you even know what it is? Well, of course, it's the thing that, that, um... No, that's the... It, it floats around. Can I tell you something? Souls are overrated. They don't really do anything. Has yours done anything for you so far? No, it's, it's like your appendix. You never even miss it. Hey, yeah, well, if it's so useless, then how come you want it so much? Oh, aren't you the clever one? Look, who's really making out on this deal here? Seven utterly fabulous wishes for one piddling little soul? Well, I don't know. What have we here? Great. Now, before 
Before you start wishing, you'll be needing this. If for any reason your wish isn't going the way you hoped, just take out your pager, hit 666, and it'll bring you right back to me. Why wouldn't it go the way that I'd hoped? Oh, I was just throwing that out as a for instance. Every wish is going to be 100% fabulous. But you'll find that out as soon as you make one. So, so I should make one now? Well, if you don't mind, I've got places to go. People to condemn to an eternity of fiery torment. To myself, why does the existential dilemma have to be so damn bleak? Yes. Yes. We're alone in the universe. Yes, life is meaningless. Death is inevitable. But is that necessarily so depressing? I couldn't agree more. Don't you think that secular humanism is yummy? Ooh, delish. <laughs> Frighteningly, Satan's doctrines are taking root because people are not guarding themselves or their children against the schemes of the devil. Wicked. LeVay tells us how late in the game it is with our kids. He says, there's no need for pacts with the devil anymore. These kids are already aligned with satanic forces. All kinds of people are witches. There are lawyers, doctors, nurses, um, school teachers, every walk of life. Crowley, himself a homosexual and pedophile, outlined that the New Age movement was designed to draw people into these lifestyles to harden their hearts against God. His goal was to deceive the people and sell them Satan's lie. That sin didn't bring the suffering and pain the Bible describes, but that it brought freedom and liberation. <laughs> so the thing worked for everybody of every sex. She was doing it to turn on both the woman and the man. It was so free. It was so free. Nudity for Marilyn Monroe always represented a certain form of freedom. One should credit her with a whole change in attitude in the pop culture related to nudity. Sexual freedom is something we feel is very important as a necessary requisite of the satanic church. It's hard to understand if you hadn't lived before that time what a major impact that freedom of a point of view did to people's brains. You say, wait, wait a minute, then, there's no, then there are no rules. Here. We project the voice of freedom forward beyond ourselves to the youth of today and to the generations of tomorrow. And make no mistake about it, we will not stop until we have achieved our freedom. Do not stand in our way. The church, the state, hormones will decide my fate. The church. The day is coming, we, you know, we're going to like them, we're going to do them, uh, we're going to take our freedom by any means necessary. I will do whatever I have to do to keep, to stay free. If it's a choice between me staying alive and free and somebody else not staying alive, I'm willing to make that choice too. We're young, we're grand, we're going to rule the world. I think uh, it should be brought out that we not only condone, but we encourage all types of what would be called sexual perversities and deviations because we feel that in a few short years it will be established that everyone is a sexual deviant, pervert, fetishist. We're happy to be here. We feel that historically we are part of this movement for liberation. All my life been attracted to younger boys. I love them. <laughs> How do I make myself attractive to boys? We feel a person should be free to indulge in all of the so-called fetishes, all of the so-called uh, uh, admirations that they would so desire. Through the decades, Hollywood has fueled the fires of this lie by peddling greater and greater waves of filth to numb our consciences. And like the frog in the proverbial pot, we are almost cooked. Parents, we need to guard our children now more than ever from these kidnappers of the mind and heart who smuggle death into their lives without remorse. Can we tell our parents? No! Even the one who claims to be the representative for Satan on this earth, Anton LaVey, proactively guards his son. When he was asked if he let his son watch TV, LaVey replied, no. He can when he's old enough, if he goes into it warned. Does a Satanist have more scruples than a Christian parent who follows the Bible, which is the best written book for parenting ever comprised? God tells us, So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives, and humbly accept the message God has planted in your hearts. And remember, it is a message to obey, not just listen to. If you don't obey, you are only fooling yourself. Unfortunately, those who are entertained by spirits working through movie stars are being entertained directly by mediums. 
However, the Lord has set down specific unchanging instructions for all of humanity. He warns against mediums, saying, As for the person who turns to mediums and to spiritists to play the harlot after them, I will also set my face against that person and will cut him off from among his people. God prohibits turning to mediums, not because he is a cosmic killjoy, but because he loves us and wants to protect us. Hollywood is nothing but a repository of lies. Mel Gibson says, actors are all basically liars. Janine Garofalo says Hollywood is built on lies, conning the American public like politics. Director Brian De Palma says the camera lies all the time, 24 times per second. Marlon Brando explains how they are all liars. It makes me so sick. It's amazing, the people in the movie industry. The scriptures have foretold with amazing accuracy the growing rebellion against the faith that is culminating for the end times. Paul writes, the Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. We have already seen that the word for actor is hypocrite, and that they and their Hollywood institution are leading the world astray through their lies. How then will these demons get their messages out to turn away people from the faith and follow after them? The very next verse tells us, Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with the hot iron. Hollywood is being utilized as an end-time propaganda machine of destruction as it teaches its demonic doctrines and lays waste those of God. This direct assault on God leaves you an active participant to one side or another. In the bedroom. What the hell is going on, Mary? Who are you? Don't play games with me, Mr. Richards. I'm in no mood. I've been out of my mind all night. Oh, my God. Hi. Who's your little friend? Maybe I should be running along. Uh, wait. No, this is a mistake. I'm not gay. Oh, really? And I'm Tony Danza. I, honestly, I swear it. I'm not. Well, then tell me. Who was in the Broadway cast of The Pajama Game? Janice Page, uh, John Raitt, Eddie Foy Jr. I assume you mean the original cast because there was a revival in 1973 that starred Hal Linden and Barbara McNair. I am gay! I rest my case. Wait, I can prove to you that I am not gay. Kiss me. Oh, this is just sad. You shut up, bitch! Please, Allison, let me kiss you. Remember the champagne, the court bustles? All right, Elliot, kiss me. I'm gay. Um, no, thanks for dropping by. Good night. Yeah. Bye-bye. <clears throat> You've been drinking again, haven't you? This is just... Would you like me to show them how the sign of the curse works? The sign it's of completely the curse? different. How does it go? No, not at you, not at you people out there in the audience, but this is the difference. Aim it toward Red China, would you? <laughs> this is the sign of the horns. A curse sign, the two fingers extended. This way, spread apart for sort of shotgun blast, you know, I always over. figured if I ever met the, de the devil, it'd have dirty fingernails. Go on. No, they're not. <laughs> yes, they are. Where, where? Dirty, dirty fingernails. Well, that's because I've been uh, fooling around with your equipment. Never mind. There. Don't blame it on the story. Go on with it. All you. right. So that's the sign of the horn, and then what happens? Is that it? Well, the other ones, too. Yeah, what are the other ones? The other ones, one of them's the pox sign. That's three fingers extended. A pox on you? A pox sign.
like the night you had all those brandy Alexanders and ran up and down Fire Island with your cute little Speedos singing Evergreen. I tell you, right from the get-go, the fans took a look at Elliot Richards. Uh, 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 a couple women faded, a couple fellas, well, I'd rather not say, but they liked what they saw. Yeah, absolutely. He's a big fella and an imposing fella. Oh, he's enormous. He's enormous. He's looking at seven foot six of the program, and I say he's easy. a game like you said 11 feet tall. No, I don't think he's that big, Jerry. No, I'm saying the game he plays is, uh, is, is, is that of some Viking giant with a, with a basketball in one hand and a club in the other standing 10, 11, 12 feet tall. It is obvious that Elliot Riches uh, control this game right from the tip off. Right from the get go, Elliot is a dominating force in uh, tonight's game. And he would fire slammer, jammer, rub and stank all Man. over it with rib tipping jumps of double vanilla funk. Well, let's take a look. Here's that. Here's a pass worthy of John Elway. What a dump. But that's a beautiful play. Here he is, lining up for the three, and Ricola is good. But here comes his patents it over the shoulder, no look three pointer. And so the cow was returned to its rightful owner. OK, boys, tonight's homework. Algebra. X to the nth plus y to the nth equals z to the nth. Well, you're never going to use that, are you? <laughs> Imperialism and the First World War. Well, what's done is done, I say. No point thinking about it now. <laughs> German, French, Spanish. Ya, ya, we, we, see, see. It's nonsense. Everyone speaks English anyway, and if they don't, they ought to. <laughs> so, no homework tonight. Yeah! But I want you to watch a lot of television, don't neglect your video games, and I'll see you in the morning. Should we say 10? 10, 10.30? No point getting up too early, is there? <laughs> Elliot, darling. What a lovely surprise. I hope you had a pleasant evening. I did get the no. Mm, I'm sorry, darling. I know that must have been really frustrating for you. Maybe I can make it up to you somehow. Oh, yeah, you've been a really big help so far. I know. I've been really naughty, haven't I? Maybe a good spanking's in order. Is that all you ever think about? Do you think everything is about sex? No, of course not. I mean, there's greed, gluttony, sloth, Anger, vanity, envy. But I can assure you, Satanism is here to stay. <laughs> 